the community of Oxford gather today to celebrate their most famous resident, Brace Beamer, the voice of the Radio Lone Ranger. The event had many activities that encouraged visitors to celebrate the thrilling days of yesteryear. Hundreds of people came to downtown Oxford in memory of Brace Beamer, with a parade, a museum exhibit, as well as a business expo and craft fair, fun was in big supply for participants. Organizers were filled with good things to say about the event. We have been working on this for a few months, and that is a very positive thing because many times you do an event like this, it takes over a year in planning. We literally put this together in about four and a half months with a budget of about $3,000. And I, I think it was quite successful. I think both communities really enjoyed it today. And of course, the good weather added a lot to it as well. We're really happy to have the uh, first annual, hopefully annual, Lone Ranger Parade. A big display at the museum I encourage everybody to, to look at. And then the rest is there's a business expo across the street for uh, small businesses. And down here, there's, there's more businesses and, uh, and uh, shops and crafts. So it's a big, huge uh, event and uh, something to put on the calendar for next year. One large part of the festival was the Lone Ranger exhibit displayed in the Northeast Oakland Historical Museum. We were lucky to get a collection from a, a resident that uh, had a huge collection of Lone Ranger material. And uh, he loaned it to us, so we've got like three cabinets full of his collection. And we have one of our own that's been here permanently. So we put that on and we put people outside here to help get us some more membership and uh, get donations for the Brace Beamer statue which we hope to build in Centennial Park. Well as far as in the museum, um, it evokes a lot of memories in people and when they come in and they start looking at some of the stuff we have they go, oh I remember that or grandma had that and then that leads on to a story and it's just a lot of sharing of memories which I love to do with people. Dale Lopez, a huge contributor to the display, was filled with stories of his childhood hero, Brace Beamer and the Lone Ranger. I've been collecting this since I was a little boy in the 40s, starting out by sending box tops out with a, a 10 cent or 15 cent scotch tape to it to get one of these many premiums, like specialty rings, uh, silver bullets, buttons, and other kinds of premiums as are on display here. So that started out in the 40s when I listened to Brace Beamer. I was probably about seven years old when I first became interested in the Lone Ranger, and I never missed him at 7.30, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evenings. This man was an icon. Uh, radio was in his infancy. Uh, he began as a wholesome uh, individual, clean cut, never swore, used perfect English, never shot to kill. He was a hero to Americans, not just the children, but America was in the depths of the Great Depression and they needed a hero. Hearing about gangsterism of the 30s and the early 40s, this was the guy that wore the white hat. A special guest made an appearance at the museum. Bob Daniels, Brace Beamer's grandson, spent time talking to visitors about memories of his grandfather. Um, I was 14 when he passed away, so I remember him really well. You know, it's a funny thing that, that really, I didn't get that he was the Lone Ranger really until I was about nine years old when he did an appearance at a, a boys camp. The, the reaction people tended to have around him was one of, um, this man just entered the room if it was indoors and he just filled up the room. He was six foot three and a half, weighed 200 pounds, he had that huge booming voice and when he walked in the room you knew he was there. And kids just immediately were mesmerized and attentive and you know he could have asked them to you know rub their bellies and pat their heads three times and they'd have done it that fast. When I was growing up my dad knew Brace and he would take us out to the farm and Brace always when there was people around he'd dress up like the Lone Ranger and he'd hand out the silver bullets and we always had carrots to feed silver but my biggest memory of Brace is he was a very commanding person and when you're a little guy and you look at the six foot four person with this booming voice, um, it's just, you're awestruck. He's a very friendly person um, and did a lot in the community. Brace Beamer lived in Oxford on Drainer Road. Many visitors stopped by his old home, including Shirley Ann Maylock. She was a child voice actor for the radio show. Not only did she work with Brace Beamer, she also worked with his predecessor, who died in an auto accident. 
Looking back, she can remember Brace Beamer's first show as the Lone Ranger. But I was on the program that Brace first did after Earl Grosser was killed in an auto accident. And uh, it was very nerve wracking for him and for the whole cast. Uh, you know, that was quite a transition to go from one voice to the other. And radio, um, you define people by their voices. But, you know, Brace, once he got going, you could see him reaching his stride and he was fine. He was fine. And what a wonderful voice. We all know that. So the whole cast was in one room, one studio. Sound effects might be off in a side room, depending on the studio, it might be in the studio with you. And so when you'd have kind of a mob scene of a posse or whatever, you'd have five or six men around the um, microphone, which I might add was suspended from the ceiling. So it was to grown up height. <laughs> and so they had this big green box that I stood on so that I could reach the microphone. So it's really back in the day technologically, obviously. So we did a broadcast at 7.30 for a half an hour for the Midwest. And then we stuck around and did a live broadcast at 10.30 for the West Coast. And for all of that work, I got $10. And finally the union came in and then it went up to like 35. But it was a great working cast. Uh, it, it was very professional. It just was a, a fun event for everybody. Nothing but nothing but smiles all the way around. What a, what a great event for our, our joint communities together. With the success of this year's Lone Ranger Days, many organizers hope to make it an annual event. At the very least, they hope to raise funds to erect a statue in Brace Beamer's honor right here in Centennial Park. In Oxford, I'm Katherine Havrilla, ONTV News.